Hey everyone, and welcome to Dark Sun Gaming. My name is Chris, and in today's video, this is going to be something completely different than what I've posted on the channel so far. What we're looking at right now is Ebis Paint, and this is what I use to create my thumbnails. Now, I've had a couple different people reach out to me and tell me that they like the way my thumbnails looked, and I've tried to help them out a couple different ways. Uh, talking to them and, and trying to guide them and we found that it was going to be a little difficult trying to text that information across and so what we've decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and make this tutorial video and just kind of show some people what I do uh, it's not going to be extremely in-depth it's very basic because I am still learning myself but I thought it would be a good way to kind of jump in show people what I'm doing, how to do some different things, and specifically today, it's gonna to be about thumbnails. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump into my gallery and you're gonna kinda of see some other works that I've been kinda of using. You can tell that on my uh, OBS system that I use to create my videos, you could see the background that I actually went around and created there. So you can create backgrounds for OBS in Evis Paint as well. And then also the banner, that I've uh, created for my my channel, you've got that. I plan on updating my uh, picture that I use for everything that right now is uh, Goku in God form. And uh, so I'm gonna be doing some different things to kind of update that, but any which way. So what we're gonna do here is actually create a new canvas. So down at the bottom of the screen here, you're gonna notice a blue X, or. Uh, plus sign. Go ahead and we're just going to click that and you're going to see where it comes up and tells you new canvas. Now you can import a picture directly, a number of different sizes that you want to go ahead and use potentially. But right now what we're going to do is the very first one, which is going to be for thumbnails. Now I use 1280 by 720 and that seems to work the best for me. It, somebody else may have some uh, other size that they want to use or if you find something on the internet that suggests a different size that's great hopefully that'll work out for you but I use 1280 by 720 so we're gonna go ahead and hit the OK button and we're gonna get our blank canvas now with this canvas you can actually right away take and take and put two fingers on the screen and when you do that and pinch them together you can zoom out and then if you spread them apart you can zoom in so that way I have a good idea of how I can manipulate my canvas in addition if I take my two fingers and rotate it I can rotate the way my canvas is going to look so there you go I was able to rotate it there 180 degrees and I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate it back so here we are with the canvas kind of have an idea of where we're at now we're gonna go ahead and add a backdrop to it now if you go down and look at the bottom you're gonna see some slides with the number one on the front let's go ahead and push that button there and then you're gonna see where the layers section pops up now through here, this is gonna be where I'm going to manipulate the, the picture quickly and in some different ways. And then I can also add the picture that I have saved in my photos you know, on my phone. And in case anybody is wondering, I am actually operating off of an iPhone. And if you have Android, I have had people tell me that they've been able to download Ibis Paint through Android. So hopefully, uh, that will work out for you and you're able to do so, but I do use iPhone for my system. So on the left side, you're going to notice that there's a uh, black uh, uh, blocked out area and you're going to notice the bottom uh, a white camera. Let's go ahead and click that. We're going to jump right into all of our photos and we're just going to select a picture. Now this right here is a picture that I can go ahead and manipulate a number of different ways. I can drag a finger to move it. So one finger and I can kind of move it around with just one finger wherever I want to be able to place it. And it just kind of stays in one position. Now, if I wanted to, again, zoom in on it, all I have to do is take two fingers, put them on the screen and then spread them apart and I'm zooming in. And then if I bring them in closer, I'm going ahead and zooming out. So the thing that's nice about being able to do that is I can go through and I can zoom it in and it's going to fill up the entire canvas. Now I can also scroll down and I can make it so it's darker. Just use the top portion of the of the photo that I selected or I can move it up and I can use the light portion of it. So a number of different ways you can kind of get different effects and it's nice because then I can go ahead and utilize two different versions of the same photo and get completely different looks. 
Now, another thing that I can go ahead and do is let's say I didn't like the way that that was uh, set up on my canvas right now. I can actually rotate that picture 360 degrees. So down at the bottom, you're gonna notice a grayed out section that's got translate scale, perspective form, and mesh form. Let's go ahead and just hit anywhere in the dark grayed area. You're gonna see operations and repeat pop up. In operations, you're gonna see the hourglass, uh, or not a magnifying glass symbol that's blue. Right next to it's the white circle with an arrow on it, and that's gonna be how we rotate. So we're gonna go ahead and select that, it turns blue. I now can rotate my picture any way I, I want, so I can go just a full 360 degrees. Now, I'm gonna hold down onto it, and you're gonna notice the top. I've got the degrees right now at zero degrees, so that means that's the original point of the picture. So if I just continue rotating around and I want to get to 90 degrees, just kind of readjust my fingers, and there I am, I'm at 90 degrees right there. Now I can go ahead and zoom in, and again, you're gonna notice some things kind of changing around a little bit, but there's 90 degrees. I actually rotated it just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard when you lift your fingers up and off, you'll rotate a degree or so, so you've got to adjust that. So I'm just gonna put one finger down. Again, you're gonna notice how it pops up, and you can see uh, a couple different things with the degrees. You can also tell my magnification. I've got it zoomed in at 237% of the original picture. And then you're gonna notice the little uh, cross symbol there. Now, right now it's the first numbers 428, 427, 426. It's because my finger's slightly moving on there. Well, if I move my finger to the left, the number is getting to the negative, all right? That means it's uh, just traveling to the left of the screen. Then if I actually move my finger to the right, you can see it's getting positive. All right, same thing if I go up and down. If I go up, the number is going to be getting smaller. If I go down, the picture moves down and, the, and it gets bigger. Think of it as a graph, okay? You have the uh, X and Y axis. You've got the positive side, the negative side. That's gonna kinda help you out, hopefully, at trying to be able to adjust where you want it. But that way you've got a pretty good idea of, hey, this is where, where I want some things. Now, the little green check mark, we're gonna go ahead and leave that there. We're gonna go and hit that. Now, you're gonna see a prompt come up that says extract line drawing. You don't have to do anything with this. I just hit cancel. I know that there's some functions with it. If you hit uh, okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay to kind of show you uh, two different things. So I'm gonna go ahead and push okay. You're gonna notice that the picture goes to black and white and you can adjust the black, the white, in the middle. If I don't like that, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the green check mark again and it's still gonna be black and white grayed out. If you look up at the upper left portion of the screen, you're gonna see like a little looped arrow kinda of go to go backwards. It's the, basically the back button. It, it undoes the extract line. So there we go, we have some things situated. We're ready with our backdrop. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our first picture. So I'm gonna go ahead down at the bottom. You're gonna notice where it says two. That's the number of layers we have. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that two button there. You're gonna notice the different layers and I'm gonna go back into the camera roll and I'm gonna grab a different picture and this time I'm just gonna grab a picture of Gohan. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of move him up, get him so he's pretty big on the screen there. So that way you have an opportunity to see what he looks like. Again, I can alter him any way that I want to, the same as I was the backdrop. And we're gonna go ahead and hit the green check mark, hit cancel this time so we don't do that. Now you'll notice when I'm here, I can do a number of different things and, and, and this is really gonna help out. So let's say I wanted to have him in the uh, background. If you look, you've got the, the layer sections, you've got, it goes three, two, one and then it has a, a little eye on it. If you push that little eye, he disappears, but it's still there, the layer is still there, so you can actually utilize this if sometimes you wanna use the, the photo, sometimes you don't, that way you're not having to create a whole bunch of different types of canvases. That will work out very well for you to be able to do, so just something you can kind of play around with, but then it has 100% normal. Now what that means is, is if you scroll all the, or look down at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see a little bar, it's got a positive and a negative. And it, it, right now it's 100% all the way to the positive. If I start moving that, you'll start noticing that number going down, but look at Gohan there. He's starting to kind of disappear and fade away. So we just kind of leave him all the way up at 100%, set ready to go there. And then the three little lines. Now, the three little lines is how I'm going to be able to move the, the layers. So if I want three to actually be two, I just simply move it down and it adjusts. Now, it's because 
Gohan is behind the picture that's there. So if I actually type the little, or hit the little I on the number three with the backdrop, it disappears. Now you just have Gohan on the white canvas and he's set. Now I can actually rotate him back around and we're good. So that's gonna get you a pretty good idea as far as how to, to adjust your layers on however you want to have them. If you also look down at the bottom and you notice your background, it's either gonna be white, uh, the, the gray checkered, or you can actually have it to where it's the, the dark checkered. Now when it's the dark checkered, the thing that's nice about that is it allows it so that you can actually do some more alterations uh, that I can do in other videos if this is something that people enjoy doing uh, I, or enjoy watching. I'll go ahead and, and make some additional videos and things to kind of show some of this different stuff. Uh, but that right there, we'll, we'll just go ahead and leave him there. Now off to the side, let's say you made him an accident, made a mistake and you need to readjust where Gohan is. If you look at the black bar down at the bottom, you're gonna have the uh, a couple different things there. The third one down is the little cross symbol again. If we hit that, we go back to the picture moving screen and I can move it all the way around. Now, one thing you wanna notice is he is cut off now because he was originally here, it removes everything that was there. So if you decide, oh, I want to have his feet, you're going to have to reload the picture. But if you wanted to go ahead and change him around, you could go ahead and do so and uh, make whatever alterations or anything else that you want to. So we'll go ahead and hit the check mark. Now watch, there's a couple other things I'm gonna show you on some of these. If you notice the second button down is a white box with a black circle and then it is a black box with a white circle. This is basically like a negative effect. So you can kind of see there to where you can make him where he's being negative on that so again just kind of a little different effect that you can alter and change on a couple different ways uh, not to mention the fourth one down is if you want to switch him from being on the right side or the left side you can kind of tell in the picture there he's just going right around and i don't even have to worry about altering anything if i just made a mistake or i want to see what he would look like if i altered the picture however i could do that same thing with the number four you can go up and down you can kind of see where he sits on everything from that point. Um, the two lines, that's actually to merge. So now that I've done that, these are actually all together. Now, if I wanna separate that back out, I can just go hit my back button and uh, merge the layers down. We should be fine from there. Now there should be a way to be able to alter that back. It's not like you merge back here. Are you kidding me? There we go. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Kind of took a couple different times. See, live video feeds, uh, probably something I need to look about editing out. So, um, but as you can kind of see there now, his, his it's back to being multiple different layers. Everything's set from there. So now let's say you liked that Gohan and you wanted to have two of them and you wanted to make sure that they're identical in size. Now what you can do here real quick is the back on the left side, you'll see the uh, plus sign that's got like a little box. If you push it and, and hold it down, you'll see it says add special layer. So you release it. I can then duplicate this layer and it makes an exact copy of what you have. So let's say I wanted to have one that was negative, but on the opposite side, that's how it looks. And it's the exact same positioning, everything's set the exact same way, it's just the fact that basically you have them in two different ways. Now if you notice, again, you can see that the negative Gohan is on top of the regular Gohan. I can go back in, I can adjust that, look at it, now regular Gohan's on top of the negative and uh, just a couple different alterations from that standpoint. So uh, those are just some a couple different basic things from that point. Now what we can do is uh, uh, go ahead and let's say we wanna save this and we want to be able to, to upload it to whatever. I can go ahead and just hit the, down at the bottom, you'll notice the, the uh, symbols. We're gonna hit what looks like to be a back button. It's just an arrow pointing to the left. If we hit that, you can go back to your gallery, save, as a PNG or save as a transparent PNG. So we're just gonna go back to my library 
and you're set from there. And then if you look across the bottom, I can actually choose a couple different things. Now you can either upload this a normal way or you can hit your load button here, which is gonna be the uh, one that's highlighted out. If I open that, I can select how I want this to go through and look. So I'm gonna probably save it here as a uh, JPEG. And when I hit JPEG, it'll then give you your normal options to be able to send it through a text, through mail, uh, through a Google Drive. And that's actually how I set up a lot of my stuff is I just upload it to Google Drive, go on to Google Drive, wherever I may be at a computer. And that's one thing that's nice about that. Download it from whatever computer I'm at and then be able to build uh, everything straight into YouTube right from there. So pretty, pretty good on that standpoint. Um, so that's kind of today's video. I hope this really helped some people out. And again, I, I can definitely go through and show some different aspects that I do on some different things. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do. You can add text, you can add uh, new pictures, you can actually go through and, and kind of erase pictures and do some different things that way. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of have a video that was just showing some of the basics on how to create a, a a number of different things within the thumbnails just to kind of get you an idea on getting the picture set up right away. And then obviously you can kind of grow from that standpoint. So I hope you guys liked today's video. Uh, please make sure if you haven't done so already to hit that subscribe button. And again, if you like the video, please hit the like button. And uh, let me know down in the comments below if you like this, uh, if it's something you guys want to kind of see a little bit more in the future of. And uh, uh, pretty much take it from there. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Let me know and get some feedback and uh, wish you the best of luck on creating thumbnails. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you guys later.